Hi everyone and welcome back to the channel. Today I've got a lot of exciting things to talk about because Blizzard just did a press release with some really exciting new information for the game. Uh, there is some good news and some bad news, but mostly I think it's good news. There's some exciting things to see as well. We've got a new hero coming and also four new cards have been announced, which is pretty interesting. So let's get straight into it. I'll start with the new cards because that's probably the most interesting thing to talk about. Um, the reason is that <clears throat> they move cards into the Hall of Fame whenever they get too powerful. And now they've wanted to introduce four new classic cards that go into the classic set just to equal out the classes so they've got the similar number of cards in the classic set. So we're getting two new mage cards, we're getting one for Warlock and also one for Rogue. So let's take a look at the mage cards first. Starting with Icicle, two mana, epic card. Uh, it's a spell, it does two damage to a minion and if that minion is frozen, draw a card. So we've seen similar effects to this before. It's a Drawing cards is really powerful. I think the, the downside of this card is that the minion has to be frozen first, which isn't very easy to do. There are lots of tools within Mage that you, where you can do that, but none of them are really that strong uh, or played that much at the moment in the game. Frostbolt is the only real one um, that you would play with this. So, But Frostbolt's better than this card, I would say, because Frostbolt can go face. It fits much better into the Tempo Mage kind of archetype. Drawing the card is very strong, yes, and if you combine um, Icicle with Frostbolt, it's 4 mana, deal 5 damage to a minion, and draw a card, which is pretty powerful together, but you need 2 cards to do that, which makes the combo uh, or the effect much worse. So, not a very strong card, but an interesting one nonetheless. Moving on to Tomb of Intellect, which is a 1 mana spell. This one adds a random mage spell to your hand. So this is, we've seen this in the game before with Babbling Book. Um, Babbling Book obviously is much better because it's a minion and you get a 1-1 one, one body with it. There are advantages to it being a spell rather than a minion because of course it can be discounted, you can play this for zero mana. And there are a lot of pretty decent mage spells, so a fairly decent card, but again not one that really fits into a deck that I can think of right now, um, especially the more powerful decks. Call of the Void is probably the worst one I think. Uh, this one is the Warlock card, 1 mana. It does what it does is add a random demon to your hand when you play it. This card, I mean, there are a lot of kind of bad demons. I think demons, if you put specific ones into your deck, you can make them work together. But then, as soon as you add random ones, it's not very strong. Um, I don't think uh, when you're playing Goldan, you want to bring back specific demons. You don't want to be playing this card and then get a random demon, which just doesn't really help. Um, of course, Hal Fiend's in there. You definitely don't want a Hal Fiend. But if you get a Void Lord, pretty good. But if you're spending one mana to get a Void Lord in your hand, you still have to spend the nine mana to play it. So not a very strong card in my opinion. And finally, there's Pilfer, which is probably the best card out of these four, I would say. It's a one mana rogue spell. The same theme as the previous two, but what it does is add a random card to your hand from your opponent's class. So this is exactly the same as the Swashburglar. So very similar to the Babbling Book, but it doesn't have the 1-1 one, one body, so it's not as good in my opinion. However, it does have some pretty good uses. Um, of course, because it's a spell, you can play it with the Gadget Zan Engineer, so that helps. The effect is in Rogue is actually pretty decent, um, and it being a 1-mana card really is quite good because it helps to activate your combos. Um, you can use it with Gadget Zan Engineer to draw lots of cards. So I think that one's probably the best one, but again, none of these cards are probably going to be seeing much play. It's not going to introducing these four new cards is not going to change the meta in my opinion. But I think that's probably a good thing. Remember, these cards are going into the classic set, so that means that they will be in the game forever. So we don't really want them to be super powerful cards, which are game defining, because otherwise um, they'll have to get put into the Hall of Fame eventually. So that's the new cards. Let me know what you think, guys. I think it's pretty cool that they're doing this. Uh, we're getting some new cards introducing the game outside of an expansion, which is quite nice. But don't forget, you won't be getting these cards. You do have to craft them if you want them or open them through classic packs. So to be honest, if you've already got a pretty hefty classic set, opening these by buying classic packs probably isn't going to be very easy. So you're probably going to want to craft them. Moving on now to some of the bad news and Blizzard has said that they are actually putting on hold the in-game tournaments mode which was originally promised for this summer. 
This is a real shame um, because I think in-game tournament mode would be really cool for a game like Hearthstone. I think it really needs that um, to either be able to play a tournament with your friends or even play a tournament against random people online. It'd be a really fun feature um, that I think a card game like this really needs. So they've said basically that what they came on up with felt tacked on. It didn't really fit into the game because Hearthstone doesn't have the right kind of social features at the moment. So unfortunately, they've put it on hold. They said they're going to revisit it, but it's not going to be in the near future, to be honest. I don't think um, if they've, they've basically shelved the whole project that they were working on and they're going to have to start again. Ultimately, that's disappointing, but I think it's also a good thing. I think um, it's good when developers take these hard decisions, when something they want to put into the game, something they've worked on isn't strong enough or isn't good enough, then I think it's really important that they take these, these hard decisions. Um, there'll be a lot of pushback from the community, a lot of people complaining because they wanted to play it, and I wanted to play it as well, but I think it, it's right for them to, to wait and give us something that's worth it rather than just putting something into the game which doesn't really belong. Blizzard also talked about the state of the meta in the game right now. Basically, in summary, they said they're happy with where it is because there's a broad number of classes that can have playable decks, and they're not going to be making any nerfs in the near future. Um, they did also talk about Giggling Inventor, how they're watching it, but they quite like where it is at the moment. And I have to agree with that. I think because it's a neutral card, it is being played a lot, but everyone can play it. It's very powerful, but everyone can put it in their deck. So I quite like it because it slows the game down a little bit and stops you getting rolled over by aggro too quickly. I think the only instance where I don't like it is in Quest Rogue, but... You know, there's a lot I don't like about Quest Road, to be honest. Um, so I don't think it. I don't think it should be nerfed. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comments. If, what do you think about Giggling Inventor? I think uh, there are enough counters to it as well. Mossy Horror and also the the Blood Knight that removes the Divine Shields. I think those are um, two counters which kind of work. So I think I think for the moment that's fine. I'm just a little bit worried about the game because I think it feels a little bit stale at the moment because. Although there are lots of decks you can play from lots of different classes, ultimately they're very similar to decks we've seen in the past, just with a few Boomsday cards introduced. I don't really think that the Boomsday changed the meta enough. They also talked about Wild, how they're just going to keep that as it is as well. No changes to that. A lot of people are upset about um, Druid at the moment being extremely strong. Cards like Juicy Psych Melon um, and Aviano, for example, are really, really powerful. I don't play Wild myself, so I don't know too much about this. But uh, I think a lot of people want some changes to Wild. But it's, it's kind of difficult, really, because Wild is supposed to be exactly that. You're supposed to be able to do these crazy combos and have these crazy cards. But when one deck sticks out as extremely powerful, it just kind of makes the whole mode worse. Next, they talked about the ladder experience for new players, and they're going to be introducing something which I think is really quite a good idea. And they're introducing 25 new ranks, so you can now go from 50 to 26. So if you're a new player, you will start at rank 50, um, and you, will, you can't lose stars at those ranks. You'll progress to those ranks getting new rewards, which they haven't talked about, but they said that you will be getting re certain rewards. And then once you get to rank 25, you can no longer go back into that pool. So what it means is new players will only play against new players. So I think that's a really good idea. Um, obviously, if you get some long-term players making new accounts, they will start in here. Um, so that will be a bit frustrating for new players. But if, you're, um, if you want to, you have the opportunity to skip that mode completely. Um, you won't get the rewards from it, but if you're a returning player, that's probably the best thing to do. So pretty cool and another good way to let in new players learn the game and play against people at their level. Next they talked about the welcome bundle and the welcome bundle is always in the game but you could only buy it once. Well now they've said that they're going to re-release it so if you've already bought this before you can buy it again and it is a pretty good offer but you, you get 10 classic packs. Um, and usually you would get a random class legendary card, but now that they've they've changed it and said that you'll get one of the legendary dragons. So either Alexstrasza, Deathwing, Malagos, Nosdormu, Onyxia, or Ysera. So you're guaranteed to get one of those legendaries. So if you haven't got one of them, and there's some classic cards that you still need to get, that's probably a pretty decent deal to, to go for. They also talked about the Hallow's End event, which will be coming on the 17th of October this year. To be honest, um, it seems 
from what I can gather, exactly the same as last year. You fight the Headless Horseman in the Tavern Brawl. But what was interesting and really fun from last year, it was the dual class arenas. And they're going to be bringing that back. So that was when you could pick a hero and pick a different um, hero power. And you combine the two classes to make a deck in arena. And I think that was really good fun. So I'm glad to see that coming back. Finally, and I'm not really that excited about this, but as part of the Hallow's End event, they also announced a new Paladin hero which is coming. His name is Sir Anoyo. Um, so it's basically just an Anoyotron for the Paladin class. Honestly, I'm not looking forward to this. I think, as the name suggests, this is just going to be really, really annoying. Um, unfortunately, it's not going to be available for free. Um, it is going to be as part of a um, pack bundle. Uh, they haven't announced the price of it, but apparently it will be a good price. I think it's going to be bundled with Witchwood cards. Um, yeah, it's a little bit annoying when heroes have been available for free in the past. But I suppose if, if they can make money through cosmetics, hopefully that means in the future we can get cheaper card packs and more free card packs and things. So whilst it's annoying, I don't really want this hero anyway. <laughs> Okay guys, thank you so much for watching. That's all of the updates from today. Let me know what you think in the comments. There's a lot of interesting changes here. Some pretty good ones, some bad ones, but overall I'm quite pleased with these announcements. It seems like the, the game is in a pretty good place. So thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.